Hello everyone, my name is Alice and I use she her pronouns and today I'm doing a question and answer in Buenos Aires and I'm so excited for you all to follow along on my day as I answer some frequently asked questions about my time here in the city. But first I am off to the gym. I start every single morning off going to the gym. I have a gym membership a few blocks away from my house actually so it's great that I have easy access to being able to move my body in an intentional way. So right now it's a little bit before seven and I'm about to go hit the gym. Finished my workout. I finished my workout. I think that a common question that I get a lot is how do you maintain a routine here in Buenos Aires when I'm constantly traveling and just constantly on the move. You know, for me, it really circulates about just like understanding what practices are my medicine. For me, starting out by going to a workout in the gym just totally sets my intention for the day. I think that I'm naturally a morning person. And so I think that just being able to wake up and go to the gym first thing in the morning is a great way to kind of reset my rhythm for the day and just really be able to be ready to take on the day no matter what happens. I think every person is different. Every person has their different medicine. But for me, that's definitely how I feel like I reset. I am so thankful for my body for showing up. And now I'm about to go walk back to my house, get ready and go to a cafe. And before I do that, I'm gonna answer some more of your questions. So I'll see you all in a little bit. Bye. Like a common question that I get is how is it living in a host family, especially with the food situation? Do you make food? Do you not make food? Do you cook for yourself? Are you able to eat healthy in Buenos Aires? And as someone who is vegan slash vegetarian, definitely flex a vegan here, I would say that that honestly is kind of a reflection of my diet style here. I think I'm very flexible in that I'm living with a host family. I want to respect their boundaries and their willingness to cook for me and accommodate for me and then also just meeting myself halfway there. So I think that I've maintained a plant-based diet as well as I can here. Living in a host family is great in that you get to try new things. For me, usually I always make breakfast for myself. There are plenty of options to eat vegetarian slash vegan, but it's kind of slim on protein, so really making sure after my workout that I get sufficient protein. Lunch, I always buy. Actually, I do a peso port peso place, which is kind of like a buffet style, and I make a salad or have a, a variety of certain things or I'll go out. For dinner time, I almost always eat with my house mom. And so that's kind of what the meal situation looks like here in Buenos Aires for me, for my study abroad. And I think it is possible to maintain a certain diet lifestyle like vegan or vegetarian my next question that i feel like i get a lot is how is the food in Buenos Aires? like that's something that i definitely was wondering when i came here i was like oh my gosh like what's the food gonna be like is it gonna be good especially like me being vegan and vegetarian and i would say the food is okay i feel like there are a lot of other aspects which i like in Buenos Aires and Food is not at the top of the list, but I would say that I'm just feeling grateful, obviously, to have food on my plate, and I love my host mom's cooking. I really appreciate it a lot because I oftentimes like what she cooks me a lot better than what I eat out, and I was going to say that also my program gives me a stipend to eat lunch on, and so that's part of their budget and part of the programs. That's why I eat out at lunchtime because they give us money to budget for eating out at lunch and then you're supposed to eat breakfast and dinner at your host family's house. I eat breakfast after the gym is around like 8 30 and then eat lunch around 12 30 and then in Buenos Aires you have merienda which is like a snack and so I eat like a small snack around 5 36 and then my host mom eats around 8 30 and so for me it's definitely very different than what i've been used to and so that's also been a very big adjustment of like when i've been eating which portions and just like what makes my stomach happy because i think that for me i don't like going to bed on a full stomach and i don't like having just a lot of heavy food before i go to bed especially since i wake up so early and just go to the gym and so just like i think that's a balance for everyone of like figuring out what works for you but I think that that's definitely been something that I've struggled with a little bit of just like understanding that balance and understanding that intentionality of 
what time I should be eating, when I should be eating, what I should be eating, and it's a, it's a process, and I'm giving myself grace through all of it. Okay, so now I'm going to go to a cafe. I actually have a call to take with a incoming possible student from Davidson, so I'm so excited to keep connecting with you all and just keep giving my advice for Davidson and just obviously this experience in Buenos Aires and there's a fly, love that. I'm studying abroad in the fall, but that means that in Buenos Aires it's summer now, spring to summer. Oh my God, <laughs> when I tell you that it is so hot, it's actually concerningly warm. So that's why I'm wearing a dress and it's literally November. If you're studying abroad in the fall, I pack lots of layers, spring and summer clothes too. Okay everyone, so now I just finished at the cafe and now I am actually walking to the bank. I feel like another question that I get sometimes is how expensive is Buenos Aires? The exchange rate is really good right now. For one dollar, it's 322 pesos for the blue dollar rate. It's almost three times as cheap here in Buenos Aires if you pay with cash versus if you pay with card, it's the national exchange rate, which is 156. But I would say that I feel like I'm saving a lot more money here slash having so many more experiences here for the amount of money that I'm spending, if that makes sense. Now I am going to the bank, which is Western Union. So Western Union gives you the blue dollar rate instead of the national rate and so I definitely recommend if you're here in Buenos Aires or Argentina to use Western Union slash Pago Facil. It's definitely so much better. It's very easy. It's simple. It's safe. Definitely recommend if you all are looking for ways to save money and also get money conveniently from the US. So I am so silly and I forgot my form of identification. I forgot my passport. So I actually cannot go get money right now, but now I'm gonna go get my laundry. I get my laundry done at a place nearby, and it's pretty cheap to get your laundry done. I do it every like one, one and a half, two weeks. So it's honestly like pretty good, I feel like, for, for the price and for the express delivery. So gonna go get that right now, and then I will check in with you all afterwards. I just cannot believe I forgot my form of identification. But hey, that's life. Laundry achieved. So now I'm on my way to class slash group meeting where I take my classes. I always try to take public transportation wherever I go. As you can see, there's a bus right there. And the bus system, I'm not even gonna lie, it's a little bit finicky. It sometimes doesn't come or the buses usually are just late. But that being said, I actually really like the subway system. So I feel like I would rate the transportation system as six out of 10. The buses don't usually come sometimes, sometimes not, but they are basically free, which is really nice. It's only 30 pesos. And so for that, I'm really grateful. So here I'm at one of the bus stops and usually you have to put your hand out to indicate to the bus driver that you want to go onto the bus, which is different than other transportation systems. I feel like in other places, I try to avoid taking Ubers or other taxis because they're kind of more expensive for Buenos Aires. And so I prefer to take the subway or bus systems. I'm about to take the bus, but I really hope it comes. Let's just hope, let's pray. Okay, that was literally a perfect example of how I fight for my life every single time I try to get a, a bus. So basically the other bus that I want to take, the route was closed. So I had to go to another bus stop and then I like sprinted for my life to get this bus that I'm on right now. But just perfect example of the bus transportation system here. Got my little Subway card. Thank God this bus stopped for me. I'm feeling very, very grateful. So I just got my food and I'm about to go to class. I'm kind of running late. Here is my poor peso vegetarian uh, meal and it's actually so cheap. It's around 500 pesos, which is around like a dollar and a half, which is insane. So yep, so here I am here and um, my class is across the street and I will see you all very soon. So I finished my time at class and I took a meeting and now I'm walking to the park and I actually just bought a journal which is actually so exciting to me because I love journaling and I just feel like the start of a new journal means start of a new era. 
so I'm super excited about that and I'm going to the park right now to meet my friend and we're gonna journal and talk and reflect and I'm I'm just so grateful for those kind of moments because I feel like in the city you oftentimes don't get a time to just like pause and reflect and just show up and be grateful for life so I'm super excited about that and so I'm gonna go to the park and also answer a couple of your questions there. So I just came back from Parque Las Heras, or I'm like right in front of it. You can see it right there. And I guess just like spending time in green spaces is so important for me in the city. Basically, I just realized and understood the importance of just like going to green spaces like these and I feel like a question that I might get a lot is that how do you find those spaces to meditate, to relax, to reset in when you're in a city? Like how is studying in the city? And I feel like for me, being able to cultivate those spaces where there are like green spaces such as parks, public parks, there are free places to go to meditate, to work out, to spend time with friends just to really reset and I think that that is so important especially when you're in like this kind of city where there's constantly cars moving, buses going, there's just so much action and I think that like being able to cultivate that soft, gentle, nurturing space for yourself is so important. I'm so grateful that Buenos Aires does allow me to go to many different green spaces including Parque Las Eras, which actually is one of my favorite parks here in Buenos Aires. It's just so like calming and I just love all these certain people you can find in the city at public at public parks. I will check in with you all once I get to the bank, which is hopefully very soon. Let's pray. Let's manifest. I'm finally back from yoga. I thought I'd answer more questions. Why do you pick this program? Why Latin America? And I knew I really wanted to understand the intersection of my two like major and minor. I definitely chose this program because of its academic focus paired with the themes of this program, which are social movements and human rights, which is exactly what I kind of want to focus on in my career path. And so definitely, I guess the subject matter influenced my decision on why I want to choose this program. I actually chose a partner program, not choose a Davidson program because I wanted to be outside of the Davidson realm. I didn't want to be in that Davidson bubble again. So I highly recommend that if any of you are looking for study abroad programs to definitely choose programs that are outside of your school if you can, if you can afford it. I know I didn't want a basic experience in Europe, just traveling around partying all the time. I wanted to find a good mix of a program that was academic, but also that was allowing me to explore outside the Davidson bubble and explore a different place that maybe wasn't as accessible as, for example, Europe. I really chose SIT as well because of its, within this academic focus, it was focused on excursions and focused on experiential learning, which is something that's really important to me and something that I honestly didn't think that I was gonna have in comparison to other programs. And that definitely held true. So some people might ask, okay, Alice, like what classes were you taking? What was your credit system like? So I was taking four classes in total, three classes at a time. You have basically 12 weeks of classes and then four weeks basically of an internship or an independent study. I chose the internship route because I knew I wanted to kind of be fully immersed in the community and I knew that with an independent study I could do that, but I felt like with the internship, it was a little bit easier to be fully immersed in the community rather than forging those connections myself. Like I knew that the study abroad experience already would be very draining, so I wanted to pick an option that allowed me to contact the community and be involved with the community, but then also giving me that work experience as well. I worked with the Cultural Association for Chinese Argentinians, and so that was definitely a pivotal experience of, as to why I chose the internship experience that I did, why I chose that internship. I had such a great time getting to know other people within the community and it allowed me to connect to a sector that honestly I did not have that much contact with before the internship period. And I guess that, that kind of leads me to group dynamics, how spending time so much in a group when you're studying abroad. And yeah, I would definitely say the group is a pivotal point of 
your slave run experience as well as your host family as well but i would say that i feel so lucky to have the group that i did have to truly support me throughout all this time in buenos aires i felt like all of our program was extremely isolated from the buenos aires community because all of our classes were just with our group even our spanish class just with our group and so we didn't really have an opportunity to meet other university students who were also studying abroad. And so that's definitely something that I wish could have happened. We had some opportunities here and there, but definitely not, it was not the same as, for example, taking classes at a university and meeting the locals. And so I definitely think that spending time in a group, when I asked, so like, how did you get alone time? Like, how did you make sure to cultivate that individual time for yourself? And I think that that's definitely something that study abroad has definitely taught me of like being able to prioritize your individual time alone, being able to prioritize separating yourself from the group and drawing those boundaries. Because at the end of the day, like your mental health is the most important. And if you feel like you really need that alone time that you really need to go on a walk alone, I mean, I do some self care and not be with the group, but you are so entitled to that time, so entitled to that space. And so to just remember that, I think was definitely difficult at times, but really taught me how important I felt being abroad and being in such a big group of 16 girls. Very lucky, I loved all the girls, but then just being able to understand, okay, I need that sacred time alone. I need that time to go to the gym every day alone. I need that time to eat lunch or dinner solo once a week, take myself out. Like I need that time because when you're living in your host family, you don't really get a lot of that true alone time. And so I feel like that also leads me to my host family. I feel so grateful for the host mom that I have. I'm living with a host family. There's just one person, it's just her. So she's absolutely wonderful. I love the neighborhood that I'm living in. And it's been so great to cultivate an intentional relationship with her. Talking to your host family with things that you feel comfortable about. And not and understanding that like your each relationship is so individual with your host family. And that it's okay if you don't cultivate a super deep relationship with your host mom or your host dad or your host family but just like being able to spend time with them and get a more cultural local experience has been incredible and so i'm feeling very grateful but then i also want to talk more about my experience just living in a host family and living in buenos aires as a woman of color because honestly like this is the reason why i make these videos this is the reason why I'm sharing my experience candidly for everyone to really understand how my experience has been in Buenos Aires as a woman of color because I think that that's personally something that I had a lot of anxiety about and a lot of just, I don't know, just a lot of worry about being the only person of color, for example, on my program or being the only Asian, East Asian woman on my program or, for example, living in a predominantly white household slash area. And so I think that all of those actually did end up happening to some extent. I'm the only Chinese woman on the program, um, only East Asian woman on the program. All the directors are white and also all of the therapists that they provide are white and also the neighborhood that I'm living in is very predominantly white and then my host mom is white. And so I think that like all of those combined have made it at times very difficult to exist in Buenos Aires. I'm so grateful for the support system that I've had here in Buenos Aires, as I said before, like the community that I've cultivated within my group, and then just also at home and being able to really be able to feel supported from far away from other people who I really deeply care about. But I would say that it's definitely a strong component of my study abroad experience and has definitely shaped the way that I view my identity, the reason why I picked the Chinese Association, because I wanted to be surrounded by other people who look like me. And I think that it just all comes down with to like your mental capacity. Like certain parts of Buenos Aires are very white, certain parts of Argentina are very white. But I'm really happy that I did this program to kind of uncover the narratives that lie within that Argentina is only white, that Argentina only has white people. And like that's so not true. There's African descendant people, there's Chinese people, Asian people, there's people from Bolivia, Peru, Paraguay, all different types of people from all over the world. It's just that it is becoming very gentrified and it definitely I feel like within the program and the places that our program puts us to be safer, we are put in predominantly white areas, predominantly wealthier areas that are safer. So therefore, I think that definitely changes my experience, what I've learned in terms of kind of processing my racial trauma and other traumas here in Buenos Aires when there isn't a support system who strongly looks like me or who I feel really comfortable going to. It's really forced me to kind of look within myself and kind of understand, okay, like where 
can I go where I feel really safe? Where can I go? Where can I cultivate those spaces? Like maybe it isn't perfect and maybe, you know, I don't find a lot of other Chinese people who I can go to, but I find other soul spirits who I can go to and really confide in, or I find different practices that really ground me and different self-care methods. So I think all that has really helped, but definitely a component that I wanted to add that being in Buenos Aires as a Chinese woman for me has been really tough. It's honestly been very exhausting in my body and I can feel it. Like I can feel it within my body. I can feel just the constant objectification of men on the street, especially men, but like just in general. I think I had a lot of experiences where I was speaking Spanish, but then, or I wouldn't even start to speak Spanish. I would just go up to someone and they would start talking to me in English. And you just can't help sometimes to like, think that it's racially based that like oh well you're Chinese you can only speak Chinese or you're you look Asian so you probably can't speak Spanish or I don't know just like other things that I just couldn't help but wonder and I think that that's what led me to my internship my internship study which I can drop my paper down below I'll drop my paper which is in Spanish but if you can read it um it's about the uh, auto identification process like the self identification process of Chinese Argentinians here and so that was something that I was really curious about because I think that a lot of times I felt like I people doubted my abilities. Not only did I feel objectified by men, not only did I face, I feel like another question that people ask like, hey, like, did you face microaggressions here in Buenos Aires? And like, the answer is definitely yes. I had so many experiences where I felt really uncomfortable by the way people treated me, the way people objectified me, especially men on the street and just random people coming up to me. And it honestly was exhausting. And so it really made me think about my own identity as a Chinese woman, my own ways of processing all this racial trauma that is really held within me and understanding how to cultivate that community, how to cultivate that sacred community for you to go to when it's so difficult to exist in Buenos Aires sometimes. That is not to say that I did not like my experience in Buenos Aires. I feel like despite the challenges, I think that every experience has its learning like learning opportunities every experience has its learning moments and you meet your growing edges and i don't think that i still think i would trade my experience for the world i feel like maybe if i did change my experience i would go to brazil or somewhere that was definitely more diverse but i think that just this experience has taught me so much that i just don't feel like i have any regrets that being said i want to just acknowledge that like it definitely was difficult and if i didn't have a supportive program it would have been different if i didn't have methods of like going to people at home and in the United States and really like vetting and processing, I don't know if I would have made it. And so just like taking that into account, just understanding as a woman of color, like the support system that you need to have in general in life. But like, if you don't have that mental capacity, it's definitely something you're taking into account. SIT is a pretty academic program. And so they do demand a lot of you academically. And so being able to manage academics on top of your mental health, like it's not like I feel like with SIT, it's not like you're just doing nothing all the time. Like, you definitely can. Being able to separate those boundaries, being able to distinguish, hey, I'm gonna do my work, my reading, but if I don't understand everything, if I don't do everything, that's okay. My mental health comes first and drawing those boundaries, taking those mental health days is really important. And so I definitely think it is possible to navigate that balance between doing academics, taking care of your mental health, having a social life, going out, exploring the city, Honestly, I think that a common theme that I've noticed within being like studying abroad is that people say like, oh, you only have three months. You only have three months to do every single thing in the city. And like, to be honest, that's not exactly true. Like, you don't know whether you're going to come back again. Like, maybe you will. Maybe life will bring you back to Buenos Aires. Maybe life will bring you back to the place you're studying abroad. And it's not worth exploring if you are not in the right mental headspace. And that's definitely something that I've learned. And that's some definitely advice I would give to other people is just like being able to understand your own limits and hey, like it's physically impossible to explore everywhere in the city. It's just impossible. And so being able to understand your limits and knowing when to speak your sacred yeses and noes is so important. And being able to draw your boundaries and explore some parts like by yourself, some parts with other people, just like finding that balance, you, you like, it takes a while, but I think it definitely is achievable. I'll also drop a link down below with a list of places that I explored as well as a, a bucket list for Argentina. And so you all can check it out. How safe is the city? And as you all saw, I was walking around my phone, which was not the best move, but I would say in general, the city is pretty safe. Like I personally feel like the city is pretty safe, especially the neighbors that, neighborhoods I was in, especially just kind of the areas that I just went, I 
felt very safe. I felt a little bit iffy at night, but not too bad. I feel like in Buenos Aires, it's very centered around the night culture. I feel like it's not too bad because there's so many people out at night usually. So I would take public transportation up until around like two, if I was going out, like 2 a.m. But like anytime past that, I would probably do a Uber, Lyft, or InDriver. But I feel like in general, the city did feel, that does feel very safe. I feel like it's not smart to walk around with your phone, obviously, if you have an iPhone or a later phone, because I feel like those phones are definitely more wanted. But I don't think that it centers around violent crimes. I think oftentimes it's just around robbery than violent crimes and other things like that. So I feel like that was definitely a bonus. I didn't feel too at risk and that was good. And speaking of that, I want to talk about, speaking of going out and taking the bus at night, I want to talk just very quickly nightlife here in Buenos Aires. I know that the nightlife here is kind of insane. I'm not even joking you. It's people go hard here. People go until around, honestly, around 7 to 9 a.m. I have gone out until around 6, but I've not made it till 9. I just can't. I feel like I definitely learned a lot about my own style of like going out, what feels safe to me, what spaces don't feel safe. I think that obviously like party culture, I guess in, in the United States is very centered around drinking. And I think that's not, I feel like it kind of is also centered around drinking here and substances here as well, but not to that much of an extent if that makes sense like i personally felt like with my personal choices of not partaking in substances and not drinking um the drinking the legal drinking age is 18 here not partaking in that kind of thing for me actually really benefited both my mental and physical health i kind of decided that early on in the program after the first couple weekends i just decided look like i just i'm gonna make like a pack with myself and not partake in substances because that's just not something that my body needs right now and not something that I feel like is safe for me right now in the city. I'm just like navigating the city and not being fully myself, I think for me was seemed a little dangerous. But that being said, I feel like it is everyone's choice, but I just wanted to iterate for the people who do want to go out, but are worried about the drinking culture. Like I personally felt like with the community that I cultivated, I didn't feel pressure to drink. That being said, it definitely changed, you know, kind of sometimes like who I surrounded myself with. But for the most part, I feel like the people who I was around were really supportive with my journey. The party culture and going out is definitely a very vibrant aspect of Buenos Aires culture. And I think it's something to acknowledge that you can still have fun and not partake. You, could, you don't even have to go to clubs if you don't want to. And I think that a lot of the clubs I felt safer to go to were the gay clubs and clubs that had an easy out, like I could go back to my house if I wanted to. I could speak my sacred yes or no and go back if I wanted to go earlier um, and just really making sure I surrounded myself with people that I loved, people that I felt safe around because that's definitely something that's very pivotal in any situation when you're going out. So I just wanted to add that in perspective for when people decide, if people decide to go out, if people decide to choose Buenos Aires and are wondering about the nightlife, the program offering a good support system for mental health is the program offering a good support system? Does the program offer, for example, therapists of color? Does the program meet your needs of being able to feel supported within the background identities that you have? That's really important, a really important aspect that I think that everyone should ask when going abroad. Just everything in general, I think that like that's something that's really important to me that people should ask and just like honestly speak to alumni. I honestly reached out to two alumni and they did not reach out back, back to me. And so just to anyone watching this who is interested in the social movements and human rights, Argentina program, definitely feel free to reach out to me. I'm always open to talk. I'm always open to give my kindred honest experience and especially as a woman of color and someone who is definitely like apprehensive because of my background identities, I wanna make sure that everyone does feel represented when applying to the program and feels supported and feels like they have all their questions answered. And I know that I say this all the time. I know I say like, okay, Alice, like give yourself grace. Like it's gonna be okay. But honestly, like that is what I've really learned here in Buenos Aires. Give yourself grace. Give yourself grace with the schoolwork. Just thank yourself for showing up. And I think that's like a life mantra that I've really embodied. But I definitely think that studying abroad is hard. You know, everyone says that studying abroad is like the best time of your life. And trust me, I've had some of the best experiences of my life here. Trust me, I've had such a positive experience in so many different ways, but also it's been really hard in so many ways, as I've said before. And so I think that like being able to give myself grace and saying, hey, like it's okay if not all my experiences are positive. It's okay if I'm still learning and meeting those growing edges. Like it's okay. 
and just letting myself process, letting myself take those mental health days, letting myself just continuing to learn from myself at every single experience and being able to apply that to the next space I'm in. And so I think that that's something that I definitely would recommend that just like to understand in any study of our experience, it's not just one as that is, but just to understand that how important it is to take care of your body, to understand your boundaries, to understand your values and to speak your truth. And so that's definitely advice I would give to anyone studying abroad, not just in Buenos Aires. I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. I've been talking for literally so long. Thank you all so much for being here with me, setting the time in your day to watch my videos and support me. I really appreciate it. And if you have any other questions, you can email me here or you can just comment down below and I'll respond to your comments about your questions about studying abroad in Buenos Aires. I think that I'm all about giving that candid experience and really being able to share my perspective, although it's just one person in many people who have obviously studied abroad. I hope that my perspective helps in some way. And I just hope you all have a great rest of your day, wherever this video may find you. And thank you so much for showing up exactly who you are. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Bye.